unspoken request this morning? Anyone anywhere, Sister Jenny? Unspoken. Okay, all right. Yes. Jude? Okay. appreciate you continuing also to pray for uh, Tommy. Uh, they say at the earliest he's looking to get out is January the 15th, and that's just so-so. But uh, he is looking better. Amen. Sister Jen. Loved ones, and uh, please remember Paul. Uh, he's got that kidney infection, and he's still not better okay. all the way. He's better, but just he's talking about maybe not going to work again tomorrow. So, okay. uh, I admonish me and drink water. If y'all struggle to drink water like I do, it's terrible, but we need to drink water. Amen. Amen. Appreciate everybody continuing to pray for uh, Carrie, uh, Sister Donna's husband. And that family, uh, he lost his mother uh, this past week and, and uh, I was preaching the funeral yesterday and I know they would covet our prayers. Amen. Anyone else? All right, why don't we stand this morning? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and just thank God for him being faithful. Amen. Sister Smith. Pray for my uh, sister Angie and uh, for my husband. Amen. Also pray for Brother Nick. He texted this morning not feeling well. So uh, let's, let's just trust the Lord for these that are not here. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you today, and we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy toward us. And Lord, we we don't deserve anything, God, but your wrath, Lord. But in your uh, in your wrath, we thank you, God, that you remembered mercy toward us. And Lord, it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I pray today, Lord, that you would remember our loved ones. God, remember Sister Donna's grandbaby, Lord. Whatever the need there, you know, Lord. Uh, baby June, touch that one, Lord. Oh, oh, God, I ask for a particular unspoken request. A minister friend, Lord. Oh, minister to heal God, Lord, and touch in the area of their lives. God, bind together again and restore what the enemy has been trying and working so hard to destroy in their lives. Their ministry, God, use them continually for your glory, Lord. I pray, Holy Ghost, God, for this service today, God, for your people, our church, Lord. You heard the request of Sister Spitt, Anastasia, Nancy, and all these things. Lord. God, Brother Nick, Sister Cindy, Lord. Brother Nick's daughter, Tisha, Lord, touch her. Oh, God, minister, minister, Lord, continue to heal. Sister Shannon, Lord, and Kevin, God, touch Sister Pauline and minister to them, I pray. Oh, God, my wife's request, you see the need, Lord. You see Tommy today, his need, Master. Holy Ghost, give us revival, God. Help us, Lord. Thank you for the liberty of your spirit today, Lord. We praise and we thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Thank you, God, for the sweet liberty of your presence, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you're wonderful. You're wonderful, God. Please touch Sister Angela, Lord, all these needs, unspoken requests. Lord, you see, you see, Lord, oh, sweet Lord, please touch it, minister, sister Janie's name, Lord, have your way, God, bind us together in you, Lord, hallelujah, thank you for this Christmas season, Lord, let people be mindful of you, 
God, and help us to praise you and adore you, God, for all you're doing. God, touch the pregnancy center. Let your will be done, Lord. Oh, God, you're more than supply our need, and we praise you for it. Touch and protect today, Lord, that you may be glorified in Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious, precious name, Lord. Have your way, have your way. Amen. Your arms are not too short that you can reach me.
rejoicing in the Lord and letting God minister to you uh, this, this holy season. It's all about our Lord. I know he wasn't born on December the 25th from listening to everybody, but I tell you it's a day of rejoicing and a day of recognition of the good gifts that he's brought to man. Amen? Amen. All right. We're going to come to you at this time this morning for the Sunday morning tithes and offerings. <clears throat> Thank you for being faithful to the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy. <coughs> thank you, Lord, for each person who took the time to be here in your house today. And as we receive this, may you use this money in a, in a mighty way for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Sister Belinda and Sister Hannah has me a song for us this morning. <laughs>
my note on anybody else on them, you know, just just give it to God. And it's like, I wonder why people feel like, you know, they have to, they have to tell another human being. You know, it seems like that's the way we feel, though, is we just, I just got to tell somebody, you know. I thought, I wonder why that is. Uh, maybe it's because they're right there, you know, and, and they can tell me something back, maybe, you know. We can talk back to each other, you know. And it was just as if the Holy Spirit was just kind of spoke to me, you know, like, or, or what? Or I think what happened was the next morning, or you, maybe even that day, but I, I think it was the next morning I got up and I read the promise verse. And the Lord just spoke to me <coughs> His Word, His God's Word, you yeah. know, in the promise verse. And then later I'm doing my reading through the Bible reading, and I'm seeing verses. And I'm standing up or something, and the Lord's speaking to me, and it's like, well, the Lord can speak to us. Right yes, he can. He, yes. he does talk yes, to he us, does. Too, you know. And I, I was just delighted, and I just wanted to share that, you know. That amen. Yes, he can. We can take it to him, and yes, he will talk right to amen. us. Yes, you know, amen. Through his word to our hearts. And I just love him and, and adore him. He's so precious. He's an awesome God. That word awesome, I think, belongs only to oh, God. God. He's Amen. Just such a wonderful, precious, awesome, loving, caring God. And I praise Him. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. He's deserving of all praise, isn't He? Yes. Amen. Thank God for good testimonies that love and edify the Lord. Exalt Him. Yes. Edify the body. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn with me, if you will, to Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. <clears throat> I'm going to minister to you, Lord willing, this morning on sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. And I'm going to repeat that several times throughout the message, Lord willing. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Are we there? Amen. 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 All right. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways and to love him, yeah. and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord in his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Amen. Amen. God's got some requirements for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we love you today. We thank you and we praise you for your goodness and your mercy. And I thank you for the precious blood of Jesus, God, that washes all sin from our hearts and lives. I thank you, God, for your word, God, that admonishes us and instructs us. I thank you for what you've done, for what you're doing, and for what you're going to do. And I pray, God, that you give each of us the wisdom to follow closely to you, Lord. Lord, to be intimate in fellowship with you, Lord. Oh, God, not to just try to just do it our way and just be slipshod about it, but let us give you our all. I pray, Lord, today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. He starts out here. He said... Uh, Talking about Israel, and now Israel, uh, Israel is the uh, uh, body of Christ, God's people, amen, it is symbolic of the name of Jacob and his following generation, the Christians of our day and hour, the church age, amen, Israel, amen, who is he talking to, he's talking to us, he wants us to be encouraged in the Lord, amen, but he has some guidelines for us and some instructions for us. And uh, he lays a rule down for us. And he wants us to follow that rule. Amen? Amen. You know, it's a, 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 my wife shared something with me this week. Uh, there was an elderly lady that was struggling. And she was, her, her uh, uh, pantries were, were empty or bare, whatever. And she was praying on her face before God and, and, uh, there was a next door neighbor she had that was an atheist, and he thought, I'm just going to trick her. And uh, he went and bought a whole bunch of groceries, and he brought and set them there at the 
uh, door and knocked on the door and then ran and hid in the bushes and, and she came to the door and saw all those groceries and she said, God did it, God did it, hallelujah, praise the Lord, God did it, God did it. And he jumped out of the bushes and said, aha, I got you, I got you. He said, God didn't do that. He said, I went and got those groceries. I paid for them. I heard you praying to God. That doesn't exist, he said. And I went and got those groceries and put them there and everything. And she said, God did it. God. He said, no, you don't understand. I told you I got those groceries, not God. She said, God did it. God did it. Not only did God do it, God made the devil pay for them. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not saying we need to treat uh, sinners that way, but I'm telling you, sometimes they really need to be brought to reality yeah. that God can't have us weigh in their heart and lives. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, you know, we, uh, we need to re rejoice in the Lord with all of our heart. And uh, we need to remember in this time of celebration, time of exalting the Lord, it's representative of Christ's birthday. In the time of giving gifts and being thankful and everything, we need to be very, very, very careful not to leave God out of Christmas. So much of the world, I can't tell you how many times, and people are not even celebrating it on the billboards and stuff like they have in times past, but already this year, I've seen Merry Xmas. I want you to know they're trying to take Christ out of Christmas, but they can't take Him out. Christmas is what... Jesus is what Christmas is all about. Amen. In our time of sowing and reaping, we need to rejoice in the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our mind, soul, and strength. Paul is reminding the Ephesians in each chap uh, Acts chapter 20 and verse 35. He said, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. The gift should be a reflection of our heart. And are we here today? Amen. Amen. Help me preach. Help me preach. Hallelujah. I got a lot of hours in study. Come on. You say, well, you should have prepared the man. I got a lot of hours in trying to prepare the man. But I'm telling you, the flesh can't do anything. But if you'll get hungry, God will fill you. I got some real good stuff here. It will bless your heart. And I believe I've heard from heaven. Amen. But I need you to be hungry today. Amen. 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 Uh, we give to God those things only which He has given back to us. In the same way we do it with our heart. Galatians 6 and 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also right. reap. That word soweth there means scattereth. When you sow, you don't sow apples and reap uh, pears. You don't sow uh, grapes and, and reap, uh, you know what I mean, uh, pomegranates. You, you, you reap what you sow. Amen? And you reap more bountifully than you sow. In Galatians 6 and 7 it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I want to ask you today, what are you sowing in the Lord? What are you sowing in the kingdom of heaven? Do you only sow when you feel like sowing? Do you only preach, Pastor, when you feel like preaching? Do you only serve God when you feel like you got to do that? It's going up and down the back. Do you only serve God as a testimony? Amen. When it seems like God is doing something good or something fancy for you, or you have you decided a long time ago that you're going to serve Him, you're going to love Him and strive to be faithful to Him all the days of your life. Amen. In verse 8 it says, For he that soweth to the flesh, to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Amen. Let me just read to you a little bit. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. That word corruption means decay, yep. ruin, corruption, to wither away. <laughs> but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit of the Lord's breath, of the Numa, amen, shall reap everlasting life. Yes. Nobody would ever come to God were it not for the Holy Ghost drawing them. Right. Were it not for God pointing out the things that are lacking in their life yes, and sir. the things that are void in their heart and the things right. that they need. Verse 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. 
Amen. Hey, are we reaping? Yes, we're reaping. He's the God in whose hand our breath is in. He's the one that spoke life to us. He's the one that breathed in Adam. Amen. Life. And he became a living being. And I put a soul within him and a spirit within him. Amen. That one day it's going to return to God as it has. And he is dead. But I want you to know, one of these days, the breath that you and I have got in us is going to return to God. And that which God anointed and that which God ordained, it's going to return to God. And we're going to stand before God for it says, and after this, the judgment. It is appointed unto the man once to die. But after this, the judgment. I'm glad that I'm not waiting for the judgment to strive to be faithful to the Lord. Amen. I'm serving him today with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the best I can. Amen. I wish I felt like I felt in my office earlier. <laughs> Do you ever get hired, tired of, of hearing that? Let me tell you, at 447 this morning, I had not slept one wink. I went to bed about two, close to it, and laid there and laid there and got back up and went back to the office again. Not because I was seeking. Amen. A message, but because I wanted to seek and get to know the Lord. Come on. I wanted to love Him. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Doug, I have to preach on Sunday night. I need you to get excited about this dead morning service. Come on. I'm telling you, every Sunday morning we get together, which is the sometimes, some of y'all, that's the only time you come. God's wanting to save lost souls, God's wanting to minister. And we come and we want to testify and get excited and we want people to shout. But I'm telling you, church, church is not just a Sunday morning thing. That's right. Church is a seven day a week thing. Twenty-four hours a day thing. Amen. We need to not be weary and well doing. That's right. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them. Who are of the household of faith. Yes, that household of faith is the family, the temple, our church family, yes. the body of Christ. We especially need to do good to the body of Christ. Yes. That means that I show up and that means that I worship and that means that I do and I give my best. Come on. Because there might be some soul here that's in that's me. That's right. Yeah. You yes, see, I don't determine my voice, don't make it happen or not make it happen. My back don't make it happen or not make it happen. That's right. There's a call. Comes ringing or the restless way. Amen. Send the light. Send the light. What are you doing? Pastor, I'm sending the light. I'm broadcast. It's like Jesus is here. And we've toiled all the night and have taken nothing. We've fished and we don't have anything in the boat to show for it. And we hear Jesus say, hey, launch out into the deep. Catch your net on the other side. Why? Because, brother, if you'll put forth one more effort, it might be that somebody we hear that is for a Somebody will see a stirring and a hunger within their heart to realize that they're on their way to a devil's hill and they need that blessed Savior, amen, to strike a chord of life in them again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Paul is here giving his final warning to these people, these Galatians. Our title is Sowing and Reaping. Let's take a look at what God does require. Amen. God requires certain things in our life. He wants us to not be weary in well-doing. He That's wants right. us to be faithful. Come on. If He is not the Lord at all, then He is not the Lord at all. That's right. I gave an unspoken request this morning. I saw that it was Brother Britt and Sister Bridget's anniversary this week. I've not seen them in three or four years. I, you know, I don't know anything hardly at all about them. But I do know they've been on my heart ever since I saw that. And I'm praying for them. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to ask you, did you know I know some preachers that they only get excited and they only shout at their own preaching? Come on. Have you ever seen preachers like that? Yeah. yeah. I know some salesmen, they won't help you do nothing yeah. unless they get part of the spiff or part of the bonus. That's right. But I'm telling you, if we'll get in this thing for God, not according to man's standards, but according to the dictates of God's word, 
Yeah. Amen. And we'll see revival start happening in our own heart, in our own life. Yeah. And we'll begin to receive the Word of God as the truth as it is. The words of God and not just the words of man. Come on, brother. Amen. You see, God is the one that ordained the church. Yeah. Not Charlie Jordan. Amen. God is the one. Isaiah 57 and 15 says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit should fail before me and the souls which I have made. He says there, I will... For I will revive the spirit of the humble. Right. What is that humble? You look it up, it means the depressed and the lowly one. Yeah. Amen. That one that feels, amen, defeated at times. That one that feels cast down. Right. Amen. Amen. How often have you ever felt lowly Come in the on. Lord? And you said, God, I prayed yes. and I prayed and I prayed right. and it seems like nothing's happening. And God, I've sought you and I've sought you yes. and it seems like nothing's happening. And brother, I'm telling you, we get up to testify and we get up to preach and we get up to sing and we get up to worship and we want to look at people and we want to see that sparkle of excitement yes. in their eyes. Why, brother, because the body of Christ, it happens that way. I, I lashed my finger week and blood began to uh, it didn't squirt out but it didn't bleed there. Yeah. What was happening it was there was a healing heading that way. The white corpuscles yeah. began to go to it and begin to coagulate and begin to try to stop the full blood and everything and that's the way the body of Christ is. I mean brother if you can't feel the Lord pray more earnestly yeah. with the Bible more yeah. earnestly seek God more fervently. Why brother because It seems like I'm screaming and I'm mad. I'm not. This is just what I'm working with right now with my throat. Uh, he said, for I will not contend. God says, for I will not contend. I will not grapple or wrestle with basically Israel. That's right. These lukewarm, half-hearted Come on. Hear it. Christians, if you will. That's right. Forever. Neither will I be always wroth with them. For the spirit shall fail before me in the souls which I have made. Although God would punish his people, listen to this. Although God would punish his people for their sins, yet his wrath is not perpetual. If they were his children, he would visit them again in mercy and he would restore to them his favor. You know why you got up and did what you did a few minutes earlier? I watched that. I don't know who was first as you got up and began to worship. Amen. You got up and you began to exalt the Lord and you began to love the Lord. Then I seen one over here get up. Then I seen one back there get up. Then I seen another one get up. Amen. I didn't feel super spiritual when I come down off of the platform. I just want you to know I realize, amen, I may not be the example that led, but I need to at least be a faithful example that can follow if somebody else is leading yeah. in the right direction. Yeah. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you, I want us to have revival. I want the Holy Ghost to have liberty in our hearts and in our lives. I want those that are sick and needy when they come off the street. I want them to feel the glory of God yeah. when they come through the door. That's right. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. It says, for the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth and I smote him. I hid me and was wroth. And he went on forward in the way of his heart. For the iniquity, the self-will, the flesh, the flesh profited nothing of his covetousness. Man, you know, man is used to this scratch my back and I'll scratch your back world. Right. The world, seriously. That's, yes, that's, if you start doing something just out of the love of God toward them from your heart, they almost get eerie yeah. about it. I mean, the, what's in it? What's what's going on here? Right. What's your real What's your real motive? Right. Sure. Right. But your real motive needs to be to love God yeah. and to help people yes, sir. that you know where you come across loving. That's right. Like you've loved Him now or at some point in the past. Right. Oh, I've loved Him. He's worthy and He's yeah. wonderful. 
I woke up crying and just speaking in tongues yes. and felt the glory of God. I've been at youth camps and been at camp meetings and been in revivals and thought, you know, I'll just get up and go down to the church and pray for a little while and get down there and there'd be two or three people praying down at the church, just praying for a while, just getting shut in with God in a secret place. What happened, brother, when you got there? You don't even have to pray for you. I mean, you ain't been to church in two hours. Some people could have already had time to get cold in their soul by the end, but that's not the reason you're there. You're not there to get prayed through. You're there to worship and adore and exalt the most high God and help everybody you can to do the same. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For the iniquity of his covetousness. God said I was wroth. What is his covetousness? He went lusting after the Things that was dear to him instead of the things that was dear to God. Yeah. And God said, I hid me. I hid me and was wroth. And he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. In other words, because God hid himself from them. God's angry with the wicked every day. Yeah. Yeah. But God does not expect the body of Christ to act wickedly. Right. God expects the body of Christ to act unselfishly. That's right. Come on. To willingly surrender yes. all they got toward God because he deserves it all. Yes. Right. To him that is near, said the Lord, I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea yes. when it cannot rest, whose yes. waters cast up mire and dirt. <coughs> Verse 21 of chapter 57 of Isaiah says, There is no peace, saith my God to the wicked. We have got to somehow realize and come to grips with the truth. That we are a minority in this world. That's right. But I want you to know Jesus is a majority. Yes, he is. Yeah. It says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. That's right. And if you and I will worship God with a true heart, with a, with a heart that is overflowing with God's goodness and God's love and God's mercy, then perhaps others can begin to feel his presence. And now, Israel, Christian, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God and to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That's right. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. Yes. The, the statutes, the guidelines, the things that God is leading us in to do, they're for our good. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They're for our good. They're not, they're not, they're not suggestions, they're commandments. He right. said, for the statutes, his statutes, which I command thee this day. Yes. For thy good. Amen. A rule of law, it meant to be permanent, is this word statute. Our title today is sowing and reaping. Are you sowing faithfulness and righteousness toward the Lord? Are you letting God plow up the fallow ground of your heart? Come on. Do you, do you live each day thinking about the Lord and, and approaching His throne and happily feeling after Him and struggling and saying, Oh God, I need you. I need Thee. Every hour I need Thee. Amen. We've got to have Him, church. Amen. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Number one, but to fear the Lord thy God. That word to fear means to frighten, to dread, to have terror. Amen. That's kind of where Saul was on the road to Damascus when he was going about, amen, to destroy these Christian folk. He was there. And yes. Brother, God got him off of his high horse and God arrested him and got his attention. Yes. And brother, I'm telling you, he was blind and he didn't eat for a few days there and he didn't know what was going on. But God was in charge and in control. Yes. What are you saying, brother? I'm trying to tell you. God put a fear. He said, uh, uh, Saul... Uh, Paul, Saul, why are you kicking against the bricks? Yeah. He said, why perse persecutest thou me? He said, who art thou, Lord? That's right. He said, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Right. Amen. I want you to know, uh, Saul's persecution of Jesus was not affecting Jesus near as much as it was affecting Saul. That's right. And if you'll begin to feel after the Lord, it yeah. don't matter where you're at. I've told more people probably in the last three months 
that when I was out in sin, I was in bed, I was messed up, and I would ask the Lord, God, if you're real, don't let me die and go to hell. And I would even name some sins that I was in to certain ones, and God knows my heart. I'm ashamed of them. I wasn't bragging. I wasn't trying to share no testimony yeah. of my inability or ability. I was trying to show what God had done with a wretch like me in hopes that they could see that there's hope for a wretch like them. But as long as the devil has got the world's eyes blinded, you see the God of this world has blinded the eyes of them that believe not. Right. Lest they believe, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and be converted. Yeah. Amen. And God heal them. Amen. Hebrews 10 and 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Why don't everybody stand this morning? It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands, everybody that can, of a living God. You know, Moses, uh, Moses, when he came to the promised land, he didn't get to go in. Why didn't he get to go in? He was faithful for years and years. He did mighty, mighty things. He, he, God spoke to him face to face as a man talking to a man. He was an outstanding minister and, and example and witness for God. But what did Moses do? Moses smote the rock the second time instead of speaking to it. Right. You think, well, that's not enough to, for God to keep him out of the promised land. See, that's not your call. That's right. Come that's on. not my call. That's yes, God's call. Yes. That was a type that God didn't want to be abolished or done away or nullified with. And God deemed it necessary to send a message to you and I that when God tells you to do oh, something a yes, certain sir. way, we better be seeking oh, God. How we might fulfill the desire and the heartbeat of God. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Noah did it right. But did you know with all of Noah's 100, 120 years of building the ark and preaching righteousness and doing all they knew how to do to save that lost world, did you know there's only eight souls on that ark? One old preaching brother said, everybody Noah didn't save, he damned. Brother, when God shut the door on that ark, they were doomed. It was too late for them to pray then. It was too late. I'm telling you, there's an appointed time. And God wants you to begin to humble yourself and not be haughty and not be proud and not feel like anybody's picking on you or anybody's trying to embarrass you. Yes. You can grin till you're blue in the face. But one of these days, God will take that smirkish smile and God's going to rub your nose in it, so to speak. But why? Because he's angry at the wicked every day. Yeah. Brother, I want you to know I can pray. I, there's not a soul in here that I feel like don't know the Lord today that I'm not praying for daily. I pray for you daily. I pray for you daily. I pray for you daily. Not just once a day and not just read the list, but as I think about you throughout the day, I cry out to God in your behalf. But I'm telling you, you're going to have to do some things. Yes. What you're going to have to do is surrender. And submit yourself to the Lord. We need to fear the Lord our God. We need to walk in all His ways. All of them, not some of them. All of them. Why? Because He's Almighty God. And we need to love Him with all of our heart and our affections. With our emotions, with our actions, with our meditations, our thoughts. We need to allow Him to direct them aright. We need to serve the Lord our God with all of our heart. You see, the church has moved the old ancient landmarks. It's an adulterous people in the church in America, by and large, that don't know the Lord. And the, the church is in such a sad shape, amen, that she don't even realize that she is going to be the donkey that God's anointing comes through. As you and I pray, just like Balaam was saved by the donkey. Yeah. Amen. We don't need to be offended by, by me referring to you or myself as a donkey. Amen. Amen. We need to say God loved us. God yes. sent his son, God Jesus, to die on Calvary for us. He can't love us any more than he's already loved us. But he made a command to us here to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes. Brother, that means love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Amen. That means cut it not. That means don't be an adulterer in your heart. That means don't be proud and haughty and heavy and high-minded. Don't be stiff-necked, but humble yourself before God. I'm telling you, you're going to 
visit family. It may be that some of them that looked apart, when you get there, they're cold in their soul and they hadn't prayed through in days or even weeks. That's right. Are you going to have enough of the anointing of God in your life to discern their real condition and to be concerned about it enough to say something in a, in a loving way, however it's going to take God? Y'all can be seated if you need to. But you need to love God enough to love those that God has got a heartbeat for. God has been so loving and merciful to us. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, Thank you, Lord. but have everlasting life. Yes. Though we could never come close or even think about paying back God for what He has done for us, we can do our best to love Him and serve Him and obey Him. If we consider what God requires of us and if we find it nothing but it is highly justifiable in itself an unspeakable benefit with what God has bestowed upon us. You say, well, if God didn't bestow something great upon Job. He gave Job a double portion. And I know there's nothing that, that bears this out scientifically or analytically completely, but I believe every one of Job's kids, though they were grown, I believe that every one of them that God allowed to be taken. Job offered sacrifices for them daily. He said it may be that some of them have sinned in their heart. I believe God picked a time when they were right yes. and loved the Lord and Amen. they were serving God. You say, well, God don't hop on and hop off and hop on and hop off and hop on and hop off. No, I believe that. I know he don't. But I do know that God is angry with the wicked. Amen. And God gave you and I extra, extra chances to come and surrender and let God work in our heart. Yes, he did. Yeah. We give to God and we serve God the same way with our heart. With all of our heart. Moses, if you read in Deuteronomy 10 there, he's talking about the Ten Commandments just up above there. And he said that I stayed 40 days and 40 nights as at the first there with the Lord. <laughs> Amen. At the same time, also, and the Lord would not that the Lord would not destroy thee, that the Lord would not destroy and bring judgment upon those that deserve judgment. Right. But church, let me ask you: who are who are we expecting to pray revival down? <coughs> who are we looking to pray the fire down? Yeah, come on. We, we got it. We know how to do it. We know how to stand up and testify. We know how to sing. We know how to uh, uh, worship out here in front of everybody and everything. Right. But the other times when we're not in church, uh, how much time is passing each day that you don't even give a thought to the Lord? Come on. I'm not saying that that thought is getting you prepared to heaven. I'm saying God is worthy of that thought. Amen. And that Amen. thought will be Somehow merciful in God rendering to you the things that you need to help you to accomplish His will Amen. and please Him. You see, not every man that says, Lord, Lord, is going to heaven, but he that does the will of my Father. Hallelujah. He said, right. 33 and 11 says, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. God says, Turn ye, turn ye. From your evil ways. I don't know. I'm like Sister Smith. I don't want to discourage anybody. I don't want to lay any guilt trip on anybody. But I do want you to know that there's a closer and a higher walk with God that you and I can have. I believe than what we've got. I wish I could portray a vision that there's hope and there's help in God. But you gotta tarry. You gotta wait. Until you be endued with power from on high. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's right. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Hebrews 9 27 as it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. Ecclesiastes 11 and 3. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. What's that saying? 
What's that saying? That's saying when a person dies, Amen. when a person dies, you can't pray for them anymore. No. Effectively. No. I don't care what the Catholic Church teaches or preaches. Right. Come on. That's right. When that tree falls, it's fallen. That's, That's right. right. Amen. When breath don't fog the mirror anymore, I don't care how much money you give to the church or what you do. Amen. You can do things and you can be rewarded for it, but you cannot help that one that is already gone. You should have helped them while they were alive. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's why it's expedient for you. Jesus said that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter cannot come. I didn't say that to be hard. I say it to enlighten you. I meant it to it. To some before, but it's like they didn't understand it. They didn't get it. And they got to realize they didn't get it because the God of this world, the devil, yeah. the heart that is not surrendered to the Lord, the devil is the one that is blinding their eyes and blinding their understanding. And they want to be good, morally sound, solid people. But let me tell you, it's not in you. That's right. Come on. It's only in God. Yes, sir. Right. You can try to your blue in the face to be a Christian that's faithful. And all of your righteousness, you know what the Bible says about it? And God's truth from start to finish. He said, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. There's one thing going to get me to heaven and get you to heaven. And that's the precious blood of Jesus and our faith to believe it. And the work that God has done. I want you to know I love every one of you. And I'm, I don't want to embarrass anybody or be harsh or hard to anybody. But Jeremiah 6.16 says, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path where it is a good way. Yeah. And walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Amen. Brother Doug, you said, I was trying to pick on you. I was just crying for help earlier. <laughs> Any men among us, let us labor together. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to. I don't want to be up here like Uriah and feel like all y'all are retreating. Come on. We're laborers together. Yes. Amen. That's right. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, On every tree of the garden thou mayest free eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Amen. The devil said, Yea, hath God said? You see, that was the seed. Seed of rebellion. Seed of independence from God's plan and God's will. That's right. Seed of disobedience. And that seed took root. And the devil watered it. He said, Thou shalt not surely die. That's right. He don't have no right. Who does she think she is? This church is not the only church in town. Come on. I mean, who in the world do we think we are? I tell you, the healthy thing for us to think of who we are is people that really, really, really and truly don't deserve the love and the grace of God that He's bestowed upon us. That's right. But we recognize that it's His mercy. Yes. And we cry out, God, after having ministered to other, don't ever please, God, don't ever let me become a castaway. That's right. That's right. Thank you. God, don't let me be a has-been. How many people used to pray? How many people used to be faithful to church? How many people used to live moral, solid, sound, godly lives? But today they go about having a form of godliness with no power. And they don't recognize that God's not there. Yes. Their pristine purity that they used to have is not that way anymore. You see, in the garden, they had moved away from the first love experience. They never had to work a day in their life yes. up to this point. They didn't have to do any laundry. They didn't have to do the dishes. They didn't have to plow the fields. They didn't have to do any of that. But brother, when they listen to the devil, the devil's a hard taskmaster. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. Right. Preacher, do you ever get a positive word from the Lord? I do. Yes. I do, I do. But I usually get it around Wednesday night or Thursday. 
And I realized that God was trying to encourage me. And there's another thought for you. Because there may be somebody here that needs it. And I've only got one shot. Sunday morning's all I got with you. And brother, I'm weeping that God may do something on Sunday morning. I beg God that I would weep now, Sunday morning. That I would weep here in front of you. That you could see a broken heart instead of an arrogant attitude. I don't mean to have an arrogant attitude. I may never, I may, I may never meet a, a, that guy, Jared, or whatever his name is. I may never meet that girl. I may never meet, amen, that person in need. But brother, if the Holy Ghost brings them to my heart, I can pray for them. Why? Because God cares. And for I ever shed a tear, God bottles that tear up, brother. And I'm telling you, He uses it to accomplish His plan and His will in their life. Sowing and reaping. Why do we sow? We sow just to be rewarded down here. No, brother. That seems to be the least of it. We sow to be faithful to our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want you to know whenever Adam and Eve sinned, did you know the sin that they committed is still living and going on today throughout every human that's born? And there's only one exception, and that's the Lord. Yes. Amen. Every one of them have been born into sin. David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. <coughs> We're not deserving of God's grace and mercy. Their sin passed down to all, to everyone. Sin sprouted. And the Bible says all have sinned and come short. And the devil lied. The big lie. He said, thou shalt not surely die. I went to Google and I said, what is considered the big lie? It blow your mind. It, it's crazy. People choose to be in darkness. Yeah. And they choose to spread that darkness. Yes, that's right. And I want you to know we're going to have to choose to live righteous so you have God made and spread that righteousness. Right. And you're not going to choose it without the anointing of God aiding right. and helping you along. That's right. You'll have good intentions. I can't tell you how many times I've started the day out to fast. And oh, 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock. Boy, I'm grabbing something. Good intentions are good. Yeah. David had good intentions to build a temple. But his sin disqualified him. And he then said that God told him the sword would not depart, depart from his home. Are we sowing righteousness? Are we crying out to God to give us souls? Sister Lois, I've never met your son, I don't think, in Phoenix. How many times I'm praying? I don't know. I'm not trying to get any kudos. I'm trying to let you know I'm praying for him because of you. That's right. Amen. I'm praying for him because of the burden that I've seen in Sister Jackie. We pray for one another because yes. God moves upon us to have a burden for one another. Oh, amen. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1 Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfect in holiness in the fear of God. Beloved, Jude 1 and 3 When I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, he said, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. 1 Corinthians 15 and 22 says, for, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. There's hope. Yes, there is. There's hope for you, and that hope is in Christ. Yes, sir. But whenever God begins to deal with you, He's going to deal with you at some point by showing you and reminding you of your sin. That's right. And when God begins to remind you of your sin, He's not trying to embarrass you. He's not trying to, to make you feel lower than dirt. He's trying to let you see you need a Savior. That's right. The Bible says there's none other name given among men whereby we must be saved than the man Christ Jesus. When I was... Say January the 6th of 1980 and I came down here and I knelt down and I said God if you'll help me I'll serve you I wouldn't be an arrogant and I wouldn't be presumptuous. 
And I told him in the prayer, God, I've tried dozens and dozens of times. And I've never made it. God, I don't want to give up. God, I feel like if you don't help me, I'm going to wind up in hell. God, if you don't help me, please help me. Please help me. Please have mercy upon me. Church, let me tell you something. There's a lot of things transpired since 1980. And I'm telling you, I used to go into churches where people had been praying and fasting and seeking God for a move of the Spirit of God, and the place was charged. Brother, I didn't open up a briefcase or a suitcase and bring revival. I tried to be revived myself. But brother, when I got there, they had been shut in with God. Yes. And they were revived. They were revived. What'd you do, preacher? I just got up there and tried to give them the okay and give them permission yes. to just worship God. I tried to do whatever God wanted me to do. Why? Right. Because that's all God's wanting for us is just for us to love him. Yes. The way he deserves to be loved. Amen. He's worthy and he's wonderful. Amen. He's a great, big, wonderful God. You see, it ought to be that we're the exact same way on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday as we are on Sunday and Wednesday in church. That's right. That trumpet may sound not on the church this time. In Acts 24 and 25, and it said, as any reasoned, as Paul reasoned, of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time, and when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. But that convenient season never came. And I'm not recorded. Right. It's right. not recorded in the Word of God. But he said in Galatians 2 and 5 that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. The word here is rendered earnestly contend. It means alluding to the games. You know, know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize. And I feel like the Spirit of the Lord quickened me, and this is not a copy, so I may not have it right, but uh, it says, contend, as there would be only one to win. Contend, you fight. Amen. If you look that word up, contend, it means to fight. That's right. To strain. If the hope be dulled, you put forth more strength. Right. Sure, if you got a file, you file it. The word of God, you file it. Yes. Amen. But if you don't, you got to realize, brother, I'm telling you, the chainsaw works pretty good. Amen. For some people, for the first few strokes. But if you'll start that thing up, it'll cut down a lot more trees. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And some of us are trying to cut down trees without it. Without running, without the Spirit of God moving. One of the Pharisees desired of him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman of the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus said it meet with the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box of ointment. Mm. And stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears. And I, church, let me tell you, I'm getting close to the end here. Just try to hear this. Yes. Try to hear what God's saying. You know, try to hear what God's wanting to speak to us. This week, if God tarries, we're going to have opportunity to be more spiritual than yes. we were last week. Amen. We're going to have opportunity to draw nearer to God yes. than we might have in the past. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus said it made in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, here's where a lot of people get distracted. God's trying to speak and God's trying to minister and we're doing this right here. We're saying, I'm just as worthy to minister as they are. That's right. If he was really prayed through, there'd be more of an anointing on him. Did, did you ever read where Jesus could not do many mighty works because of unbelief? Yeah. I mean, have I so wounded you? Have I so ridiculed you? Have I so beat you up? 
to where the Spirit of God cannot flow through me to minister to you anymore. Brother Rob, won't you know you better get over it. You better get it prayed through. Yeah. Why? Because I did it in ignorance. I did it unintentionally. I didn't mean to hurt, wound, or offend. Brother, I meant to help. I meant to get oh. people closer to God. This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who or what manner of woman this is that touches him. For she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. If Jesus called your name this morning and came down. And Jesus said, talking to Lazarus, I believe in the rich man. He said, I've got five brothers. Send, send someone. To help my five brothers. Yeah. Jesus told him, he said, if they won't hear the prophets, if they won't hear the preachers that they've got, yeah. they wouldn't hear no one rose from the dead. That's right. Amen. That's right. And he said to them, Master, say on. Simon, I have somewhat to say it to thee. Say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. When they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon was a smart man. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, had not ceased to kiss my feet. Have you ever had somebody tell you to kiss their foot? I'm telling you, the world is a vulgar, nasty, filthy place. But it shouldn't be that way in the church. A church we should love and forgive and give the benefit of the doubt. Right. Right. I'm not talking about elevate. I'm not talking about live to a high place that which is reprobate toward God. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in had not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman anointed my feet with ornament. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. If God were to save you, would you love him a little or a lot? Remember, I told you that our rector's here, when, I, when God saved me, I had to go everywhere I went, I had to tell people. I didn't worry about it. If they were Episcopal or, or Baptist or, or whatever, yeah. I had to tell them what God had done for me. Yes. Why? Because I was filled with love. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be oh, saved. Hallelujah. And when you and I will really get full of Him, we'll act like He acts. Yes, we will. And we'll worship Him when we recognize His presence. And he said, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that said it meet with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. You know, in the old world, Noah and seven others were saved. There was Cain and Abel, and Abel was a little too righteous for Cain. So Cain killed Abel. Thought he'd get him out of the way. But he jumped right out of the frying pan into the fire. I'm telling you, whatever lie the devil is lying to you, that today is not a good day for you to get saved. You ain't got to do some supernatural exploit. It's already been done. Yes. yes. All you got to do is trust and obey. All you got to do is believe what God's word said. But don't be like Cain. And find fault. And just think you can get rid of the conviction and the anointing. And I want you to know 
the world, the media, Wikipedia, everybody on the New, New York Times or the World Wide Web can say Anton LaVey got saved right before he died. And he may have. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think he did, not from what I've seen and heard. But I do want you to know, I know more people that have lived in sin and been hardened toward God and His righteousness that are in hell today by my understanding and what I perceive. I believe led by the Holy Ghost in many cases. I do that got saved at the last day or last minute or last month or last year and made heaven their home. I'm telling you, the people that I love and that I'm praying for that are living in sin, I hope you're praying for them. The people that have decided that you don't have to go to church on Sunday night and Wednesday night, you better get in the book. Yes, Hire somebody to do that work. Yep. Get a hold of God and let the prayer bands around the altar, brother. Let them come alive and let yes. them be fervent and don't oh. be satisfied with just a fear yes. and a, a, a cry every now and then. But brother, I'm telling you, we're dead up in here. We need revival. We need revival. I'm trying with all my heart to help all of us. I could take you by the hand and pull you over to the altar. You might resist. I don't feel that direction. But I'm talking to you. I'm praying with you. I'm doing my part. But I'm doing my part to help these that are making the rules as they go. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Don't take it lightly. Beg God for your devotions to get a hold to your heart. Thank God to let the conviction of the Holy Ghost settle on your spirit. Yeah. You see, you can say, well, preacher, you got a bad attitude. No, I'm, I don't have a bad attitude. I just wish that there was five or six among us that had fasted two or three days this week. And I felt that charge of the Holy Ghost. I felt, I wish I could feel like running through a troop and jumping, off, jumping over a wall. Well, preacher, you're putting too much stock in feeling. Brother, let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is in charge of the feelings too. Amen. Amen. Do you realize that? Amen. Amen. I'm not serving God by feelings. Come on. But I can tell when brother, then this, this place is supercharged. I can tell. I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm trying to wake you up. Yeah. Amen. It's not all our responsibility to get them saved. Push the plate back. Get a hold of God. Brother, when they go through the door to leave, I mean, get on the prayer moments and wake him up. You tell me I'm not praying. You do not know. And you're mistaken. Right. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you, we're in desperate times. Yes. Yes. We're in desperate times. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. You say, well, we got to wait till I'm in the mood. Let me tell you, if we wait till you're in the mood and people die and go to hell and God had in plans of using you before you got in the mood, you be careful because there could be blood on your hands. That's right. I wish we would wake up. Yes. I'm telling you, I wish Jesus. that the ones that I love and that I'm praying for to get saved, I wish they were as miserable when they come to church. Sister Linda, as I was when I was lost in sin, yes. I came to church. Come on, that's good. Couldn't stand it. Jesus. Right. But I couldn't stand it. Had to get out of there, brother. Yes, sir. Had to get out of there. Okay. But today, we can be uncomfortable. Oh, it ain't much of it. It'll pass. But I'm telling you, we need to pray for the Holy Ghost to get a hold of us in such Amen. a way that it yes. does. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you what. God help us. Would you stand? Would you stand? I love every one of you. But please don't feel like I've judged you. All I'm trying to say is I don't want it to be to where I'm praying for your companion more than you are. 
if you're right with God. I don't want you coming down and requesting prayer and then you not praying. You're just letting us pray. Yeah, come on. And I'm telling you, it shouldn't be as dead as it is on Sunday morning, Sister, uh, Sister, uh, Sister Angela. If you don't mind, turn that off. <laughs> 